Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to get camera input into Godot 4 using the camera server and camera feed classes. Uh, this seems to be a little under documented and I spent a while figuring it out, so I thought I'd share how I got it working. Now, at the time of recording, this only works in macOS and iOS, which is not great. Uh, <laughs> In my case, I'm working on a VJ tool that only has to run on my machine, so it's fine for me. But hopefully someone will implement support for other platforms in the future, and I imagine they would work the same way. The one thing that really helped me work this out was studying this Godot 3 test project repository by uh, Bastian Olai. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly but uh, specifically the test camera server. This is for Godot 3, but the camera stuff doesn't seem to have changed that much. So yeah, uh, downloading this and exploring it was what helped me get this running. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I have here a new project. To keep this simple, I'll be working in 2D and rendering my camera input onto a sprite. So first, let's make our scene. And uh, let's make a Sprite 2D. We'll call it uh, Cam Sprite. Attach a script. We won't be needing process, just the ready function. The first thing we need to do is ask the camera server for available cameras. For that, we're going to use the feeds method. So in our ready function, uh, let's put a print there. Uh, we'll be printing the list of cameras. So we get the cameras or camera feeds with this method and we'll loop through it. And um, for each camera feed, we can get the name, that's going to be most helpful for us in distinguishing them. So, var name is feed.getName, and we'll print the name. Uh, oh, and I guess we need to save our scene, we'll call it main. And now if I run this, I get a list of my available cameras. So we have OBS virtual camera and USB 2.0 camera. Okay, then I want to select a camera. First, I'll write down the name of the camera I want to use. So I'm interested in the USB 2.0 camera. And then we'll make another variable for storing the camera feed, in case we need to refer to it in another function oh, with no initial value. All right, and then we extend our loop. So now if camera equals null, so we don't have a camera yet, and the name equals our camera name variable, then set camera to feed. And we could break here, but I kind of like that this lists all the cameras, even if we already found the one we want to use. So I'm going to keep it this way. Then at the end of the loop, if we didn't find our camera, then just print an error message and return because we can't really go any further. And uh, Maybe let's just add one more print to make sure we know what is being used. Um, yeah, so if we print just camera, we get like a unique ID or something like that. Uh, but here, let's put the name. Okay, now if we run this, yeah. We successfully selected our camera. And now, so what do we want to do? Uh, in the documentation, they talk about this 
Many cameras will return YCBCR images, which are split into two textures and need to be combined in the shader. And Godot does this automatically if you set the environment to show the camera image in the background. Well, what does that mean? So that means that if you're using an environment node and uh, use the camera within that, then it'll somehow do this automatically. But I'm not really using the environment for my app. I just want the camera image as a texture. So how do we make that happen? Well, first of all, let's look at our sprite and we'll go into material. We'll create a new shader material and a new shader. Uh, we'll call this camera. Defaults are fine. Then let's edit that. And here is where the test camera server repo comes in handy because there's a shader that pretty much does what we want. Uh, this is for 3D, so we'll have to make some changes for 2D. Let's copy this and paste. So first, we want to change the shader type from spatial to canvas item. We're not going to need these variables. Uh, we don't need a vertex shader here. So all we're left with is the fragment shader. And in 2D, uh, we don't have albedo. So we'll change this to color, which is the output color of the shader. Oh, and actually that's not going to work because color is a VEC3 and the output needs to be a VEC4. So we'll add an alpha component of one and that should work. Now this shader takes as input the uniforms camera Y and camera CBCR. The question now is how do we get these camera Y and camera CBCR uniform values? So we can see now that the shader parameters have appeared here. And in here, if we click it open, we can see there's an option for camera texture. So for both of these, we'll create a new camera texture. It's important that they're different because we'll click them open. Here we can select whether we get the Y or the CBCR feed by putting a zero or one here. So that's why these have to be different, that we can specify different val values for which feed. We're not going to set the camera feed here because we're going to do that from our script. And how does that work? Well, we'll continue our ready function. In here, we have access to the material and uh, we can get shader parameters for our material such as camera Y. Uh, let's call this cam text Y. Then we'll do the same for CBCR. Well, maybe I'll name this more consistently like so. And once we have these we can actually set the feed ID for both of these. So there's a camera feed ID member, and we will set that to camera.getID. And also the same for CBCR. And then there's one more thing we have to do because we modified these. We have to again, set the shader parameters with these new values. So we do material set shader parameter um, camera Y, cam text Y and CBCR likewise. And this should now work. So let's try running it. Well, it doesn't work. Uh, I think we need to set a texture just as a placeholder. 
you know, let's just set our old friend icon.svg and uh, now we can see this thing also in here. Let's actually make this the size of our viewport more or less. And now try running. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot to do, which is once we have selected our camera, we need to set feed is active to true to actually enable the feed. Now let's try running. And it works. I'm not feeling very photogenic today, so I can just look at my desk here. But yeah, that should get you started. Uh, you could, of course, do more with the shader here. All kinds of filters and uh, transformations and whatnot. But I'll leave that to you. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you. Bye bye.